Previously in the pathology lab, we saw a colonic tumour in the transverse colon. We sampled the margins and cut the tumour circumferentially. I will show a section from this area. We looked at the slice with the deepest tumour invasion. To orientate, here is the mucosa, the muscularis propria, denoted by the dotted line, the subserosal fat, and a pale circular structure that looks like a lymph node. There's also a hardened and whitish area dipping into the subserosal fat, and this could be malignant tissue or an area of fibrosis. We sent this slice together with the pericolic lymph nodes located in the subserosal fat for further processing to further evaluate the specimen microscopically. Here is the corresponding histological image of the slice. To orientate again, here is the mucosa, the tumour occupying the submucosa and muscularis propria, and the subserosal fat beneath. The dotted line delineates the extent of the muscularis propria, and the tumour appears to be dipping into the subserosa and will be considered T3 in the TNM staging. If the tumour invades further into the serosa, it will be considered T4. The hardened and whitish area previously seen on the gross specimen turned out to be an area of fibrosis devoid of malignant glands. Zooming into the tumour at medium power, it shows glandular differentiation, which is a feature of adenocarcinoma. The grade of this tumour is determined by the extent of glandular formation. There is also characteristic luminal necrosis associated with colorectal tumours. Let's take a look at some of the cytological features of malignancy in this particular specimen. There is loss of nuclear polarity, which refers to the malalignment of nuclei. There is also nuclear pleomorphism, as the nuclei are of different sizes. A mitosis in metaphase, where the chromosomes are lined up along the metaphase plate. And a prominent nucleolus in almost every nucleus. We will now move on to the lymph node that was cut in cross-section. There are obvious glandular structures that are not native to the normal lymph node, and these are metastases, surrounded by desmoplastic stroma. Adjacent to the tumour is the normal lymph node architecture filled with lymphocytes. After sampling all lymph nodes in the pericolic fat, this appears to be the only lymph node involved with tumour, and will be staged as N1. After looking at all the slices and lymph nodes, we are ready to make the final diagnosis of adenocarcinoma. As pathologists, we also provide other important prognostic information, such as grade, which corresponds to the degree of glandular differentiation. We also provide staging information, in this case the depth of invasion and nodal metastases. The presence of lymphovascular invasion on histology as a prognostic factor. Last but not least, the assessment of surgical margins to confirm the patient does not need to undergo surgery again. Thank you for your attention and we hope you gain some insights on the role of a pathologist in patient care.